Hello guys, welcome back to yet another video. Now today we are talking about the success of Dragon Ball Super since it's quite strange how the Super property has remained, you know, one of the highest grossing uh, franchises in Japan. And I'm just talking about Super, I'm not talking about Dragon Ball as a whole. Um, it's kind of unlikely, even though it's attached to the Dragon Ball brand, since Super has had many ups and downs, mostly downs, due to the animation and scheduling end, and, you know, due to the fact that the, you know, Battle of Gods and Resurrection F arcs are retellings, like, uh, to me at least, um, you know, it would seem on first glance that the Super franchise, the Super property, whatever you want to call it, would be unsuccessful. But it's managed to pull through, and basically we're going to discuss why Super has been so successful. And joining me today, I say we, because I'm joined by MJTV. Please say hello. Hello guys, what's going on man? Thank you for having me back on the channel. Nathan, how are you? I'm doing good, I'm doing good. Now I just wanted to sort of curve it over to you first. Why do you think, um, despite the animation and uh, sort of scheduling problems and them being V2 arcs, being retellings, above all of that, and just the clunky sort of writing at times, above all of that, why do you think Super has managed to be so successful as it is? Would you say nostalgia? I'm not too sure if that would be a reason. Um, yeah. I know that's a, a reason that a lot of people like to use to say they why they watch, even though they hate the show, <laughs> for nostalgia reasons. But, um, yeah, I'm not so sure, bro, because when you look at the start of Super, you know, when you look at, like, Episode 5 and you look at the negative backlash, at least online and, like, you know, articles and, you know, stuff like that, it's it's kind of insane, you know what I mean? And the ratings, you know, I, I believe the episode 47 for the Future Trunks arc had the highest rating. And even then, I, I, I'm pretty sure One Piece has had higher episode ratings than that. I could be wrong, though. Don't quote me on that. But, because I believe it was only like an 8-something. So, it's just kind of like, I really don't know what it is. Maybe it's just Dragon Ball, dude. I mean, it's freaking Dragon Ball. It beat Gundam, dude. <laughs> in merch, you know what I mean? It's like it's Dragon Ball. It's a world phenomenon. What can you what can you expect? They could put shit on the TV screen and put a Dragon Ball logo on it and people would probably still tune in. It would make money, bro. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, I mean, um yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> apologies for putting you on the spot there. Nostalgia's I think is a big reason. You brought up a good point of, you know, it's Dragon Ball and Basically, Dragon Ball equals money because nostalgia reasons, and that is that is a reason. But I think there is some sort of addictive quality to Dragon Ball in particular, and a lot of these long-running anime or cartoons, um, you know, like Pokemon, One Piece, like there's an addictive quality there. You always want to be coming back for more. And even, I think, in the old retellings of Battle of Gods and Resurrection F during those early story arcs, I think that was sort of, even if it was a morbid curiosity on what was going to happen, like, uh, people watched episode 5 and they were like, okay, how the fuck can they ruin the animation even more? So they tune into the next episode, you know? So there could be a sick curiosity there, or it could just be like, oh, like, these are retellings. Um, let's just see, like, what gets changed and all of that, sort of that curiosity. And also the, um, fact that there is retellings, they're like, people could be like, okay, what's more? What's beyond, uh, these retellings? I'm really actually curious now. We saw Shampa, uh, in one of the Dragon Ball Super posters holding up a planet. So that really got people invested. And also in the Dragon Ball Super trailer, we saw... Um, Shampa and Vados, um, we didn't know their names, we just saw them as Fat, Beerus, and Girl Whis. Um, but that took to people, and I think if Dragon Ball Super just was on the air without Battle of Gods and Resurrection F, the movies, as reinforcement, I don't think it would be as popular. It would be popular, I don't think it would have the initial install base that it had. And with a Dragon Ball Super movie, Toei knows that Dragon Ball Super is a marketable brand. Like, it is an incredibly popular 
brand. You can say whatever you want about the story arc quality, the writing, the pacing, the animation, even though the animation is fantastic in uh, the Tournament of Power, you can say whatever. But Dragon Ball Super is an extremely marketable brand, and it's quite interesting how it um, sort of got that way. Uh, what are your thoughts regarding basically that? <laughs> Well, at least now, because a lot of people have always wondered if a new movie did come out, would it be a Dragon Ball Z film or would it just be marketed as a Dragon Ball film? And now, at least going off of what we've seen from some of the posters and from V-Jump and stuff, it looks to be marketed as a super film, you know, Dragon Ball super film. That's what the logo is showing. So, yeah, at this current point in time, 2018, with all the numbers and everything collected, Dragon Ball Super is a marketable franchise, you know what I mean? It is different from Z, it's, you know what I mean, it is Dragon Ball Super, and they sell toys, they have their anime, they, or they did have their anime, <laughs> you know, they have uh, the movie coming out now, and they're probably going to have a lot more stuff coming out too in the future, so again, it is a marketable franchise, and it is funny how it got to that point, because a lot of people didn't think it would get there, a lot of people, you know, thought that it would never even reach over a hundred episodes you know what i mean a lot of people did not think that because like you said of the quality of the first two arcs and just you know the whole retelling issue you know what i mean so it is interesting to see that it's kind of like an underdog story in a way if you think about it you know and again I'm, i don't want to get into the, the story arc or this you know the, the episodes made sense or whatever the power scaling whatever made sense I'm just saying overall in terms of money, how it progressed, how it looked, the tw you know, Super at the end of its days is almost like a completely different animal than from Super from what we saw like in the beginning, you know what I mean? Yeah, and I think um, a key factor of the success of Dragon Ball Super was the 18 year break between GT and Super, and yes we had Kai in the sort of middle of that, you know, a bit of a sandwich there, of Dragon Ball with Kai in the straight middle, but Kai didn't do so well, it performed quite badly in Japan, and um, that actually got Toei's, you know, second cancellation for a Dragon Ball anime, you know, first was Dragon Ball GT, as we know, and I'll link uh, Danny's, you know, Geekdom 101's video on the truth about GT, uh, links in the description, that goes into way more depth about why GT got cancelled and franchise fatigue and all of that stuff, so I'll, le I'll leave a link down below, as well as my own video regarding my thoughts about GT's cancellation called the Fall and Rise of Dragon Ball. That's an interesting video. I urge you to check that out. But anyway, if there was, um, you know, 18 years later, we have the Dragon Ball Super movie. I think time really affects things. And, you know, 18 years uh, without any new, new Dragon Ball content. Of course, we had Battle of Gods and Resurrection F to prep Dragon Ball Super, which I think Battle of Gods for the movie and Resurrection F for the movie really helped Super out. Even though they re got retold into story arcs in Super, I think they really helped and really boosted the popularity of Super. But that's just me, and also just time. 18 years, people just want more Dragon Ball. And there's also a new generation that watched Dragon Ball Kai, and then watched the two new movies that were like, okay, I dig this, what's next? So Dragon Ball Super just appeals to both generations, and yes, it might not be the best series. I think we all know this, it's not perfect. But what it really clings onto is the nostalgia, and it just clings onto the hype moments, you know? Uh, episode 110. Actually, episode 109 and episode 110 were just really hyped. And I really like those moments of Dragon Ball Super. I think they're one of the funnest moments in the whole entire franchise for me, is watching episode one, uh, 109 and 110, um, you know, with you guys, you know, with MJ, with um, BG, you know, our our friends on Discord, um, those sort of hype moments, you kind of forget about the animation quality, or you forget about the piss-poor storytelling, you just enjoy Dragon Ball with your friends, and that's what the franchise is all about to me, and that's another reason why it got so fucking popular, was because of word of mouth, and the community really spread it, and really fucking blew this thing up. And that's why I love Dragon Ball Super, and that's why it's so fucking successful, man. You know, it, it got people accustomed to the Japanese voices as well, which is also very cool. 
and yeah, just a very influential and popular franchise and property at the moment. It's really interesting stuff. Oh yeah, I agree with you on that. Like I said before, in previous streams and stuff like that, again, no matter how I feel about the story, the arcs, whatever, Super will probably always hold a special place in my heart, and I'm probably always going to be nostalgic towards towards it. Looking back, you know, I, you know, ten years from now, because much like Danny in his days, you know, trading tapes and stuff, this was kind of like my days of being around watching it with all of my friends and stuff, and all the hype moments like on Discord and stuff. So looking back on it. It's the moments are going to count with the show, not necessarily the show itself, you know? Yeah. Um, well, <laughs> we got sentimental there. <laughs> but um, let's uh, sort of wrap it up. Um, yeah, like, why do you think Dragon Ball Super is so successful and so popular? It's booming in Japan. It's booming in the West. It's fucking booming everywhere, bro. Um, why do you think that is the case? Let me know in the comment section down below. MJ and I really want to hear your thoughts um down there and uh yeah please go subscribe to mj dragon ball and other anime content versus battles you name it he's got it links down below in the description please go check him out along with the previous videos like i mentioned before the fall and rise of dragon ball and the truth about gt and that's going to do it for us please make sure to rate comment and subscribe and we'll see you next time